Hello kiddies, welcome to another Tins Ticklin episode of Techspert Weekly. The weekly tech news show equivalent of that utter cock drip who gets on a train, takes off his shoes and puts his rancid cheesy feet on the seat opposite. And if that's you, by the way, just be aware that there's a special place in hell reserved just for you where Satan will use your face as his personal B-Day. Anyway, on this week's show we're going to have a proper poke at all of the leaks, rumours and giddy online discourse about Apple's upcoming iPhone 4. I don't know what happened at the end there. My brain just kind of went into, oh, sh he's talking about iPhones again, Moz. Most YouTubers will probably have a second go at that, but hey, it's me. If I didn't throw up or pass out halfway through the line, then it's f***ing fine. That's right, kiddies, it's almost September, that glorious time of year where Cook and Co. smugly strut around a massive pretend stage and waggle about four expensive new iPhones while members of the press watch along on a big outdoor screen and respond with as much fake enthusiasm as possible, so they're not cattle prodded by hovering staff members and banned from ever attending another launch or even glancing sideways at another iPhone. Tuesday, September the 12th is the rumoured launch date for the iPhone 15s. Nothing's been officially confirmed yet by Apple, but Tim, mate, if it is that date, I'm afraid I won't be able to attend your launch in person. Tuesday is his hair washing night. But what can we expect from Apple's latest batch of wallet drain and bricks? Well, let's have us a wee jingle and find out. Techspert Weekly! Now, all of the iPhone 15 leaks so far have been about as surprising as your Uncle Kevin getting smashed at yet another family party and instigating a massive fight after trying to finger your mum by the buffet cart. Honestly, I don't even know why he still gets invited, although at least he tends to liven things up a bit. And don't expect any radical changes for these 2023 models, especially as in recent years, Apple has tried its damned hardest not to, well, not to upset the Apple cart. You can once again expect four new blowers, a regular iPhone 15, a plus version, which is just a bit bigger, and then two sizes of iPhone 15 Pro. The only big shock here is that the bigger, better, more expensive iPhone 15 Pro won't be called the Pro Max as usual. Instead, it'll be called the iPhone 15 Pro Ultra. Ooh. Now, starting with the design, you probably won't fall off your chair in utter surprise when you hear that the iPhone 15 will look remarkably similar to the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 12 and etc, etc. You get the idea. And those sizes should remain the same, so 6.1 inches for the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Pro, and I'll be boosted to 6.7 inches for the iPhone 15 Plus and that Pro Ultra. However, top online leaky blokes reckon that the floaty turd notch of last year's iPhone 14 Pro will now be spattered across the screens of every iPhone 15 model, not just the most ridiculously expensive ones. And i got to say, after using the iPhone 14 Pro Max for the best part of a year, that dynamic island is possibly the most overrated feature since every manufacturer started slapping pointless macro cameras on every cheap piece of handset. It just kind of feels like dressing up an angry alligator in a clown costume. It may look a little less horrific, but it's still going to bite your bollocks off first chance it gets. Or in the case of the dynamic island, it's still going to get right in the f***ing way when you're playing games, watching movies, whatever. So yeah, look forward to that. Recent renders also show off a new capacitive volume rocker which replaces the physical volume buttons of previous iPhones. Although some contradictory rumours state that Apple couldn't actually get this to work properly and so they said f*** it and just binned it. Again, not really sure what kind of problems a capacitive volume rocker is supposed to solve, like maybe if you're allergic to buttons or something, that's a nice little addition. The only other big design change for the iPhone 15 family should be the merciful and long overdue death of the lightning port, replaced with a standard USB-C connector instead. You can thank the EU for that one, turns out they're not just obsessed with making our bananas less bendy, go figure. And this switch to USB could mean faster transfer speeds and faster charging speeds as well, although don't get too giddy with excitement because it's likely only the more expensive Pro models that will truly feel this benefit. And we are just talking a boost to 35 watt wires charging here as well, so it's not exactly going to be blowing your mind with how fast it is. Apparently, Apple will once again stick different chipsets into its latest iPhones, so only the Pro models will get the latest super snazzy A17 platform, while the regular iPhone 15 and that Plus model will have to make do with last year's A16, despite costing a f***ing fortune. Regardless though, at least it should mean a battery life improvement across the board so you'll be able to get a bit longer out of a full charge. 
Now that 48 meg main camera seen in last year's iPhone 14 Pro Max will apparently be slapped onto all of the new iPhone 15 handsets, while the Pro Ultra will benefit from a fresh new periscope lens offering 6x optical zoom. As for the rest of the specs, well hey they're basically the same as last year. The display tech will likely remain unchanged so it'll only be the Pro iPhones that will feature adaptable refresh rates. And don't hold your breath for a storage boost as the 2023 models will likely start at 128 gigs as usual with bugger all support for expansion. So last up, now that you're absolutely gagging to get an iPhone 15 in your mitts, how much will these fresh new bricks actually cost you? Well, a load, obviously. Expect the most basic version to cost you around 900 British quids or dollars if you live over in the States. And those pro models will probably cost you a couple of kidneys and maybe a bollock or two on top. Anyway, that's all the big leaky stuff, so definitely let us know down in the comments below what new features you'd love to see Apple cram inside of the iPhone 15s. Perhaps you'd like them to make a squishy noise every time you sit down a bit too fast, or maybe have Siri's voice replaced with the slightly depressing tones of Werner Herzog. And of course, if you're an Apple fan who's slightly disgruntled because I haven't been openly weeping with joy and anticipation at the fresh new iPhones, Perhaps you think I've been a bit mean about the multi-billion pound corporation. Well, definitely let us know in the comments below as well. And now it's time for the part of the show that, for once, I'm actually kind of looking forward to because at least it beats banging on about iPhones. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Oh! No! Oh. Ah! All right, then. So this week we are kicking off with Michael Moran. You're right, Michael, who says, Chris, why don't you do beer reviews as well as good tech reviews? Watching this drinking a Fru Kolsch. Oh, fruity. Yeah, I'd absolutely love to spend my time reviewing beers, mate. Ideally, traveling the world, visiting various breweries and getting absolutely leathered while occasionally spurting insightful comments into the camera like, mmm, good malt game there, or ooh, nice head. Unfortunately, that kind of content doesn't really fit on a tech channel though, so it'll balls up my Google Analytics and frankly, YouTube already hates me for the number of times I say things like p and so I'm really, I'm trying not to anger the Google gods as much as possible right now. But one day, one day I will outsource all of my tech reviews to AI and then I'll spend the rest of my days just getting absolutely wankered in new and exciting places that aren't this studio. That is the dream. Ian Kazi says, gonna get the Pixel 7a next week on your recommendation, assuming that I get good GCSE results. You annoyingly young git. Well, I really hope you absolutely smashed it, mate. Straight A's and earned that Pixel. Otherwise, it'll be an iPhone SE for you. Ugh. Horatio says, Uncle Spurt, what would you rather give up for a day, booze or anime? Not even close, mate. It's anime by a country mile. And for a start, I don't really get the time to watch much anime these days anyway, so I wouldn't really be missing out on anything. But what I can do is drink booze and also edit video at the same time. At least that's the theory. As long as I can still focus on the laptop display, I'm generally all right. You know, after all, I don't do anything particularly clever in my edits, like, you know, have the words pop up on the screen as I'm seeing them. All I've got to do is cut out the bits where I wander off for a piss or forget what I'm seeing and just stare at the camera in silence for a full minute. And speaking of which, what actually was the question again? Did I answer it? I'm going to assume yes. And you're very welcome. And next up, Donald Grant says, uh, 3X3 Eyes was an absolute banger of an anime from back in the day, along with Devilman. And four later was the dog's dick. Yes, that was the name of it, four later. And you are correct, it was the absolute mutt's man sausage. Just a bunch of completely random, weird shows that like, how did this even ever get made? I'm not really sure. Interspersed with creepy, sinister interludes, which were absolute nightmare fuel. I've never seen 3x3 eyes, not really sure uh, what that is, but yes, I've been meaning to watch uh, Devil, well, Devilman Crybaby, I think it's called, the reboot of the original Devilman, because I never saw that either. What I really need is the stamina to stay up till 5am watching utter shit again, like I did back in the four later days, although that's probably mostly because I was too scared to go to sleep because of all the nightmare fuel interludes. Next up, Hun Bella says, talking about classic animes, have you guys seen Grand Teacher Onu, Oni's, Onai's, I can't say this f***ing word. Onizuku? Onizuka. I have not, but I'm going to do a bit of a Googles. Okay, so the description on Wikipedia for Grand Teacher Onikus... Onis... that word. Aikichi Onizuka is a 22-year-old ex-gang member and virgin. Not really sure why that's relevant, but maybe all will become clear. While peeping up girls' skirts at a local shopping mall... Right, starting to understand now why he's a virgin. 
and also we're literally two sentences into the description and we've already reached peak anime. Uh, well, people of girl skirts, Onizuka meets a schoolgirl who agrees to go out on a date with him. Wow, she must have pretty frickin' low standards right there. Onizuka's attempt to sleep with her fails when her current boyfriend, her teacher, shows up at the love hotel they're in and asks her to return to him. The teacher is old and ugly, but has sufficient influence over her that she leaps from a second story window and lands in his arms. All right, anime girls, listen, you gotta get some self-respect, all right? This shit is just unreal. Onakuza, Onazuka, upon seeing this display of a teacher's power over girls, decides to become a teacher himself. Of course he does. But hey, lying on the floor and staring up at the in a shopping mall was working pretty bloody well for you, so why not just stick to your lane? In his quest, he discovers two important things. He has a conscience and a sense of morality. Really? Okay then. This means that taking advantage of impressionable schoolgirls is out of the question, but their unusually attractive mothers are a different matter. Because yes, obviously banging the mums of all of your students is absolutely 100% fine. You know what? Thanks, Hunbella, for this recommendation, because you know what? This sounds absolutely f***ing incredible. Definitely going to be checking that one out. In the comments, we've also got lots of chat about the Samsung Galaxy S23 Fan Edition, because that was the subject of last week's heap of bollocks. So the Aaron JP says, my heart wants the S23 Ultra, but my bank account wants the S23 FE. Yeah, even with a decent trade-in deal, they certainly ain't cheap. Gage Abdul MMA says, I really hope that the S23 FE has a Snapdragon processor. I currently have the S21 FE and it's pretty decent still. Yeah, glad you're still enjoying. I did like those old fan editions from back in the day. Although was it was it the S20 fan edition that had all the rainbow colours and the S21 FE was a bit more subdued? Done a hell of a lot of drinking in the intervening years. That's kind of got it all muddled up in the old brain there. And next up, Danger Zone says, Do you remember when you told us that FE meant fully engorged? It does sound like the kind of thing I would say. Yep. Oh, and also Danger Zone has a cracking shout out for an anime movie, Wicked City. Similar sort of vibe to Yorotsuka Doji for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's kind of a really ultra-violent, fantasy, porny kind of thing. Charmingly f***ed up. Definitely the, exactly the kind of material that belongs on 4 later at like half past 3 in the morning. Uh, David Besant says, I've been using an S22 Ultra since release, so about 18 months now, and it has the Exynos 2200 in it, and it's been incredible. Scores over a million in Antutu and games like a champion. Does get warm, of course, but I think it's a great chipset for a flagship killer. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you're enjoying it, mate. I just found that every time I compared an Exynos Samsung flagship to a Snapdragon alternative, which was always released over in, like, the States, the battery life just wouldn't be as good, and as you mentioned there, it tends to heat up a bit. It's just disappointing that we always seem to get an inferior version for, you know, basically more money. And next up, Kaz says, if the spec rumours are true, then why not just buy the regular base model S23 rather than the fan edition. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully there'll be some really nice deals in the lead up to Christmas and everything, especially as, you know, they're coming up to a year old now. S24s will be uh, getting teased and launched in the new year. Matthew Navarro says, what's your favourite phone for taking pics on holiday, please, mate? Well, every time I go on holiday, I'm basically using whatever phone that I'm reviewing at that given moment, so I don't really have a personal favourite per se. If I had to actually choose something to take on holiday with me, I'd probably go either S23 Ultra or maybe the Pixel 7 Pro because they're both super dependable day or night. So great when you're smashing back a few of the local loggers in the evenings. And you've got the uh, great zoom lens as well if you're doing you know, your wanky tourist shots. SJSTU says, help, I need saving for myself. I'm seriously liking the look of the burnt orange iPhone 15 Pro if renders are true. Get a grip on yourself, man! Yes, it is a very pretty colour, but also, I mean, just all oh, that money. Oh, God. Just think of all the crates of whiskey you could buy with the money that you're going to spend on that bloody iPhone, and hopefully that'll sway you away from it. I'm better make this the last one for the week, because I'm already massively out of time. Jed Bullet says, welcome back to Blighty Uncle Spurs. Well, thank you very much, sir. I may be mistaken, but was it Aoife last year where you invented the camera bag hat for your poor bonds? Yes, that was indeed last year's EFA trip. Uh, yeah, about as well prepared as ever, your uncle's spurt. No hat, no sunscreen on one of the hottest f***ing weeks of the year. Great times. So a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Great fun reading through all of those. Please do smash your comments down below. We'll try and merrily stroll away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, that last comment actually leads quite nicely into this bit. This is about next week. 
So at the end of next week, I will be in lovely Berlin for the massive IFA 2023 Tech Expo, which is essentially just a great excuse for tech nerds like myself to stuff ourselves full of sausages and steins while pawing at shiny gadgets. So I will be over there trying to cover all of the big stuff, but also in next week's Techspert Weekly, I'll cover off some of the stuff that maybe slipped under the radar a bit, including some absolutely bonkers concept tech. It'll be well worth a watch, I assure you. In the meantime, please do plug subscribe and do that notifications bell if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching 15-ish minutes of this bollocks. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.